Hebrews chapter 12. Now, I'm going to ask kind of a silly question. Has anyone ever been on fire? Anyone ever set themselves on fire? Either. A Lord, you, you have not. You set yourself on fire? Well, I didn't mean to do it on purpose. Okay, yeah. Nobody's, nobody's ever been on fire. Have you been on fire? Did it, did it, was it smoking and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> you should never put gas on anything except a gas tank. Yeah, I know, I know. She's blaming it on her brothers. Who was standing too close when it ignited? Yeah. <laughs> I, I got, are there any young boys? Are your boys gone? Okay, all right, good. Then I, I don't have to cover anybody's ears because I don't want to give nobody no ideas. But when I was in high school, um, some friends of mine, uh, well, me and some friends of mine, we covered my hand with Vaseline and then poured uh, pump hairspray on it and lit it on fire. And that looks really cool, by the way. You have to turn off the lights because it, it, it burns blue and stuff like that. And it didn't burn my hand because it burned to the Vaseline and didn't get to my hand. So my friend thought, well, that, that's cool. I'll try it too. And he did it without Vaseline. He just, poured, <laughs> he just poured the hairspray on his hand and lit it on fire. And for, I, I kid you not, for about three or four seconds, he's just like, wow, this is cool. Then it got hot. And he, and he went like this. And that usually puts it out. All the wind puts it out. And it didn't go out. So then he starts pumping his hand up and down as hard as he could. He's jumping up and down. He runs to the bathrooms trying to put it out with water and stuff like that, trying to get it out. Now, he only got first degree burns and he no longer had any hair on his hand. It didn't really hurt him that bad, but it was really funny to watch him running around uh, with that kind of energy. I also saw a video of a man on YouTube, <laughs> lots of great stuff on YouTube, and he was kind of a portly fellow. He was kind of heavy set, and he was he was burning some trash. Now, what I want to know is, because you only get to see the one little clip, I want to know, why was he filming himself burning trash? I'm wondering if somebody didn't set him up. Anyway, so he, he lumbers out there to the trash can all slow, like, you know, lights the match, puts it in, and the whole thing just, boosh, you know, fire everywhere. It gets on his sleeve, and all of a sudden he wasn't lumbering anymore. He was jumping up and down and flailing his arm and jumping on the ground and rolling around trying to put out this fire. Now, why do I tell you these funny stories? Because people who are on fire have a tendency to get a little excited. They suddenly have energy they didn't have before. They run faster. They work harder. They do more. Of course, it's usually geared towards putting the fire out. When somebody's on fire, they behave differently than when they're not. Now, if you've got Hebrews chapter 12, go to verse 28. We read this several weeks ago on the Sermon of the Fear of the Lord. I want to read it again because it applies here too. Paul is writing to the church in Hebrews. He says, Let us therefore, receiving a kingdom that is firm and stable and cannot be shaken, offer to God pleasing service and acceptable worship with modesty and pious care and godly fear and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Now that is a quote from Deuteronomy chapter 4. Uh, where the Israelites are at the base of the mountain and they're looking at this burning mountain and they say, our God is a, a cons- an all-consuming fire. Well, you know what it says right after that? It says, our God is an all-consuming fire, a jealous God. Isn't that an interesting combination there? He is an all-consuming fire, a jealous God. What does it mean to be on fire for God? I remember, oh gosh, it's been a couple months ago, um, Tim was here for pre-worship and he was playing the piano, I, I think. I don't remember if he was playing the piano or not, but we were all worshiping and, and Tim started praying out loud. And, and he, he kept asking God for his fire, send your fire, Lord, we need your fire. And I just, I kept listening to him pray and it was stirring in my spirit and I kept thinking, God, what, you know, I mean, it's a pretty common request. You know what? What do you want? What, what's so particular about this? You want me to pay attention to it? And the more he prayed, the more I thought about it. And finally, I didn't know what God wanted, but I wrote it down. Fire of God. Okay. When you're ready, God, you'll have to tell me what it means. And he told me what it meant. So I guess he's ready. But what does it mean to have the fire of God, to be on fire for God? Well, let me, su- let me suggest this to you. Our God is an all-consuming fire. 
And while I can't give you all of the references to fire that I wanted to show you, let me just summarize it in this way. The fire of God throughout Old and New Testament is, through one fashion or another, a fire of jealous love. Now, we normally think of jealousy as bad, right? You know, if you're jealous for somebody's car or you're jealous for their success or their talent or you're jealous for their position or or whatever, that's bad. We need to not be jealous of that. But there is a good kind of jealousy. For example, I am jealous for my wife. Now, I'm not jealous of my wife. I'm jealous for my wife. That means that if any of you guys decided to flirt with her, I may not be strong, but I know how to pick up a piece of pipe. You're not going to mess with my woman, okay? Because she's mine. She belongs to me. She doesn't belong to anybody else. And that's how that works. And that kind of jealousy is okay, provided I don't actually pick up a piece of pipe. And <laughs> that would be bad. You, know, you could take that too far. I'm, I want you to understand that. But there is a level of jealousy that is good when it is for something that is only yours. Not jealous of something, like I'm jealous of somebody else's stuff, but I'm jealous for my wife. I'm jealous for my children. You know? Does that make sense? You guys understand the difference between those two? Okay. God is jealous for us, and His jealousy is a fire. I love it in the Song of Solomon. If you want to see the references, they're actually on the sermon notes online. So you can see, not all of them, just the 20, um, but you can see a lot of those references to fire and and how they play out. But in the Song of Solomon, there's a great uh, verse that talks about uh, jealousy and how I am jealous for my lover and jealousy is a fire that burns. And isn't it? I mean, isn't that a great description? When you're jealous or jealous for something, it's a fire that burns inside of you. And that's what God has for us. He is a jealous God. We should be only jealous. His. And that means that if we have God's fire in us, we are jealous for Him as well. That means that if there is something in our lives that is taking the place of God, we are upset about that because we are jealous for our relationship with God. I want to say this. We're going to come back to this several times, so pay close attention. Ultimately, the fire of God is about love. If you're taking notes, write that down. The fire of God is about love. And the fire of God will always draw us towards God and away from everything else. Let me say that again. The fire of God will always draw us towards God and away from everything else. That's important. It's important because we can be on fire for lots of stuff. There's lots of things that we can be excited about. Things that give us lots of energy. There are things that make us run faster, do more, and work harder other than God. They're called idols. You say, well, I, you know, last time I saw an idol, it was a Buddha statue in the Chinese restaurant. Well, that's an idol statue, but we have idols all over the place. For example, people worship money. They worship safety. They worship possessions. Friends. They worship acceptance, accolades, family, power, control. I mean, the the list is endless. I could go on forever. I mean, if you look look hard enough, you can find a person that worships just about anything. It doesn't matter. I know people that worship science. I know people that worship grammar. I know that sounds ridiculous. I knew a woman who worshipped grammar. It was the scariest thing you'd ever seen. You don't talk to her very often because she'll spend her time correcting you. But worship, or excuse me, worship, well, it works with worship too. The fire of God draws us towards Him. And the reason I make that specification is because all of these things are about us. Ultimately, fire for anything other than God is a worship of self. Even if you go back in pagan days when people worshipped all these different gods and they would sacrifice their kids to Baal and Balak and they would, they would, you know, sacrifice animals to all these various gods, you know what they were doing? They were trying to manipulate circumstances to benefit them. They didn't care about the god, they just cared about themselves. Ultimately, any form of idolatry, any form of worship is going to be a worship of self other than God. And that's why today we don't worship Baal. Well, maybe there's some people in. United States that worship Baal, I don't know, probably. But here in Hoxie, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who actually worships something other than God except themselves. We worship ourselves all the time. It's about me. It's about what I want, what I like. 
my safety, my money, my possessions, my friends, my acceptance, my family, my power. True worship of God is all about Him. It's not about us. And when we come together on a Sunday morning and we worship God, it's not about us. You know, I hear, I hear people, I don't necessarily hear it from here, but I hear, I've heard people many times comment, well, I just got blessed from that service. Great! That's great! Did God? Because He's the one who counts. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't walk out of here happier than you came in, but if God didn't get blessed, then we failed. Amen? Okay. We need to be worshiping God, not ourselves. Now, being on fire... Any kind of fire, whether you're on fire for money or you're on fire for success or or you're on fire for relationships or you're on fire for friends or acceptance or whatever. Did I say acceptance twice? No? Okay. You can be motivated. You can be excited. You can have more energy. You can run faster, work harder, and do more because fire always does that. Whether it's your hand that's on fire or whether it's something inside of you that's on fire for something else. But the fire of God will always draw us towards Him. There's a lot of false fires out there, even in the church. Even in the church. Most often, those false fires are about church or about self. Let me give you some examples of false fires. One of them is newness. Newness is a great fire. Um, For me, if I get a new gadget... I will do anything to do something on my new gadget. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, you buy a new laptop and you're like, oh, this is awesome. I don't have anything to do on this laptop, but I'm going to find something to do because I want to use the laptop, right? You know what I'm talking about? The rest of you are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, Cindy, Cindy knows what I'm talking about. She knows what I'm talking about. Her and I, we, 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 know, what we're, we know what it's like to have that kind of fire. Uh, maybe a new tractor. you got nothing to plow, but by golly, you're going to... You're going to get behind that new tractor and take it out for a spin. A new car. You bought a new car. We're going to go for a drive. Where are we going? I don't care. We're just going to get in the car and go. Surely I'm not the only one who knows what this is like. I see no. Yes. Yes. Jared does. Maybe it's. Yeah, right, Shane. Nice try, pal. (laughs) I know better. Maybe it's just my generation. I don't know. But new stuff gets people on fire. You know what? New churches do, too. Now, I wasn't here, but when this church was new, when it was brand new, I'll bet you guys were excited, weren't you? Now, you were sad because you came from a, pace of, a place of pain. I understand that, but there was, a, there was an excitement. We're going to do something new. See, new gets people excited. But, that's, but there's a problem with that. Once it's not new, the excitement goes away. Because it's about me. Because it's not about God. Now, it could be new church. It could be new salvation. Your own salvation. A lot of people, when they first say, man, they're excited. They're raring to go. But as soon as it's not new, they're not raring to go anymore. Because they're not on fire for God. Another, go, another common false fire is a common enemy. Oh, we've got to get them commies. Whoa, I tell you what, those commies, they're bad people. So I'm going to work harder and I'm going to do more. And I'm going to do my part so we can beat the commies. Do you mean, I was a little young for that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody have common fever here? Yeah, that's what I figured you did. <laughs> you guys will see, you face them off face to face. This is a little different than most people. But, uh, you know, people in America, uh, maybe not uh, during the Vietnam War, there was a lot of turmoil during that time, but, you know, right after World War II, and during World War II, the Nazis, man, we've got to beat the Nazis. We've got a common enemy. And the, the country unites, and they get excited And and they have energy, and they do more, they work harder, and they run faster in order to beat the common enemy. That's on fire, but it's on fire for something else. It's not on fire for God. Now, this happens in churches, too. It could be uh, bad people, it could be a church split, or it could even be the devil. Let's get the devil! Yeah, let's get the devil! There's nothing wrong with getting the devil. We're supposed to get the devil, but our focus is supposed to be on God. We're supposed to be on fire for God, not on fire for beating